a couple of announcements in a moment, but since we're all standing, let's just go ahead and open a word of prayer, okay? Father, we do, as we look ahead to this coming year, and where as we don't know what exactly the future holds, uh, we do know that you hold the future. And so as we look and we say we want the peace that we sing about it at Christmas time, uh, we know that that was a peace between God and man, and so that is the peace that we seek to uh, live in, and that is the seek to peace that we seek to bring uh, to the world. And we pray, God, that the message that we study today from your word will uh, be part of, of launching us out here into this next year. And we thank you that we have this church to gather, and for every person that you brought here today, we know there's folks that can't be with us uh, right now for for many varied reasons, God, we pray that you would be with them in a special way. I know there's many people who are sick and, and dealing with challenges, so many of them on our prayer list, God, uh, and we ask you to be with them in a special way. And we thank you for those, Lord, who have, who have been overcoming some things recently. We thank you for the many answered prayers uh, that even are represented in this room, God. We know you are a great God. You do great things. And so we want to praise you for your greatness here today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated, and um, uh, you got the message. Vanita's going to be having a, that surgery, uh, quadruple bypass, on Tuesday. So hopefully you got that phone message. So uh, definitely be praying for her. She's one of the people that I'm kind of mentioning then in that prayer, you know, uh, going through uh, challenges and sorts. And also... Uh, What's the pastor's name at Har Harmony Baptist? Jimmy Bartlett. What was it? Jimmy Bartlett. Yeah, Jimmy Bartlett. I don't know if you know this, but Jimmy Bartlett over at Harmony Baptist, the pastor, he passed away. And so actually Larry Maynard has been, uh, been preaching over there a lot uh, for him as his health, you know, obviously wasn't what it used to be, but the Lord has taken him home. So, uh, you know, I didn't want you to be aware of that if you weren't. Uh, but also, you know, pray for Larry. He's over there. Uh, preaching, preaching this morning, obviously, so he might play a role uh, in that. So keep him, him in mind as well. I think one thing that we didn't put in the bullets in probably is that you can. I think you can start grabbing those offering envelopes, right? Did we put those out yet? The offering envelopes. All right. Uh, so you can, if you want to get your offering envelope, an offering envelope pack for the coming year, those are, those are out. That's about the only thing, uh, not necessarily uh, in your bulletin, uh, but. Court, one of the things that I think is neat about today is that last week we got to do, uh, you know, Christmas Eve, and now we get New Year's Eve on a Sunday, and so these are nice times to then, you know, recognize that and put God first and put God uh, to the, you know, in the foremost uh, of our mind. With all that said, I want to ask you to stand again and let's sing this hymn, King of Kings. Please stand. <coughs>
be seated. As the choir is getting settled, I uh, will, for our scripture reading, I'm going to read from Romans chapter 5, and then also going to read from Romans <coughs> chapter 15. And then I would encourage you after scripture reading, since you don't have a sermon card this week and we're not using any PowerPoint for the message, then if you want to keep those spots in your copy of God's Word, I encourage you to do so. A couple things after I sat down, I realized I wanted to mention. One is the Gideon tree. You have a count there of how many uh, Bibles uh, on the Gideon tree. And I already noticed that uh, somebody, somebody, a couple people had already added ornaments to the Gideon tree. So uh, if you were meaning to do that, you know, donate some Bibles for Christmas. The, the tree's still there. If you hung one of the ornaments on and you didn't write a number on it, and uh, you want to stop by and write a number on it, just so we know, because that's kind of how we, how we count them. So we had like four ornaments on there that didn't have any, so I just count them as one. I can't make up a number. So, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to say you know, next week that uh, we even raise that number. But 29 Bibles is pretty good. We can probably do a little more. And you see also that we have one candle here that we're still looking to light for our Lottie Moon 
offering. So if you hadn't have an opportunity to give to that, uh, I encourage you to consider that uh, as well. Did y'all notice a U? Anybody notice a U-Haul over here? Yeah. All right. So uh, hope you don't have any plans this afternoon. We're gonna go over there and no, no. We actually we unloaded uh, Traven Powell and it, now his his wife Natalia. So they are married. So they actually. I got in town last night there with their parents they're staying over uh, in a uh, Airbnb over in Concord and uh, weren't able to be at church this morning but we moved uh, their stuff in uh, and we're going to be working on getting the house ready for them and such so uh, uh, they'll be uh, staying in another spot in the meantime but he will be so youth group you get to have uh, your new uh, student pastor youth pastor there for this coming Wednesday so I encourage you to be there and also invite your friends and also parents. You realize then that that's obviously a very exciting Wednesday night, so I encourage you to get uh, your kids there. As I mentioned, I'd like to share before we, we sing our preparatory hymn, which is The Solid Rock, and it's on purpose because as that song begins, it says, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And that is the the theme, the subject matter of our message today, it is hope, especially as you then look to, you look ahead to a new year, right? And I hope you can, I hope you can do so with not only a sense of hope, but true uh, biblical hope that only comes from God. So first, I was going to read Romans, we'll go in order, even though most of the message will come from chapter 15, we'll start it at chapter 5, and I want to read actually verses 1 and 2, uh, and then 5, and that's mostly because there's a lot going on in 3, and I want to kind of focus on the bookends of hope that are right here. So Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. In verse 5. And now hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who, who was given to us. Right, so we're talking about a hope here that does not uh, disappoint. Now you go over to uh, chapter 15. And we look at verse 7. Receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. And now I say to you that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. For this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing your name. And again he says... Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. And in him, the Gentiles shall have hope. And then this is our key verse we're going to be looking at here in a few minutes in the message. Now may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God remains forever. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. Let's sing the solid rock.
Children's Church, and by the way, the Children's Church rotation, I know it's blank on the back for next week, it continues just as it does the same week uh, that you, that you uh, do Children's Church, so if you thought you're up next week, you are up. You going this way? Going this way. Follow Ruby. He's like, I'm by myself today. There you go. You got another friend coming. She's a little too excited to head out, I think. I hurt my feelings. No. By the way, I mentioned to you that there's going to be two spots in Scripture, so if you, that's another thing that your, your tear-off comes in real handy. So if you need a, something to save your spot, you can tear off your, uh, tear off your response form that's on your, on your bulletin and kind of slide that in there in Romans chapter 5 and that way you can you have a like my Bible I only have one ribbon in this Bible I've had other Bibles that I had ribbons installed but uh, there's not a ribbon installation place near here so I haven't been able to uh, to do that so we're going to look at chapter 15 then in Romans and also chapter 5 and I'm going to cut on my microphone finally. Did you know that uh, subject matter mentioned in our scripture reading is, is hope? As we look ahead uh, to a new year, we're most effectively positioned for the future, but especially at important transition points. We're most effectively positioned for the future if we look to it, and in this case, a new year, with hope. Without hope, life can be unbearable. In fact, some might have even come in here today and you feel like you don't have a lot of hope. Or maybe your hope level is low. And when we read scripture that we talk about here, that it says abound in hope. Uh, you don't feel like you're abounding in hope. Certainly, we know lots of people in our lives. I would like to think that a collection of people coming to church on Sunday morning, the majority of us here because we're Christians, uh, we know the God of hope, that we have a, a higher level of hope, we should, than the people in this world. But certainly, we are surrounded every day by a world that is devoid of what we'd understand as true biblical hope. And in that sense, life can be unbearable. And our motivation to live depends on the belief that we have something to live for. To be without hope is to be overtaken by despair. We have, live in despair. It's easy to look to the future with a dim outlook. A dim outlook says, well, something surely will happen, but it's probably not going to be good. That as an aspect of despair is a dim outlook. Or we could have a desperate outlook. This is saying that, well, something good could happen, but I don't see how. To live in desperation. We could have a deluded outlook, where we say something bad will surely happen, but I'll just ignore it. We're delusional. We could have even, if it could get worse, a defeated outlook. Where something bad will happen and there's nothing I can do about it. Or, no matter what happens, it won't work out for me. 
this is all aspects of having an outlook of despair. And these are the ways in which we view the future when there is a lack of hope. Such views of the future, they seem empty or even worse, they can even be terrifying. One of life's worst experiences is losing or living without hope. Tragedies, failures or disasters, or even disappointments, how about that, suffered in the past can end up shaking our confidence in the future. I'm painting a bleak picture, aren't I? And that's on purpose, because where there is a lack of hope, there is this bleak view of the future. So what is hope? Well, we do want to clarify that when we're talking about hope and true biblical hope, it's more than optimism. Some people are more optimistic. Some people are more pessimistic. I tend to be more, more optimistic. I tend to, you know, hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. But that frustrates Jennifer a lot of times. One phrase she does not like me to say is, oh, it'll work out. Some of you are laughing right now. That is a phrase that probably gets on your nerves. All right. So, oh, it'll work out. Like, what are you saying? It'll work out. It's not based on anything. You're just saying it because you just want it to work out. Well, optimism, I believe, is good. I believe that as Christians, we should be more optimistic than pessimist, pessimistic. But when we think about optimism like that, really, hope is more than just optimism because optimism a lot of times is without a real basis. It's also hope is not complacency. Sometimes we just kind of get in a place of, well, complacency. And if optimism is without basis, complacency is then just without care. You know, once again, complacent, not caring. Optimism without basis, complacency without care. That is not then the, what, what hope is. It's not just optimism, not when we're talking about biblical hope. It's True hope, and it's not just complacency, true hope, biblical hope, has a solid basis as opposed to just, you know, unfounded optimism. It has a solid basis, and it causes us to care greatly about what will happen. We're not complacent about the future. Oh, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. No, we actually care greatly about the future. We care greatly about what will happen. So it's not complacency. It's not without care. But this hope, this true biblical hope, also, we must realize, is not based on ourselves. It's not, we can't look to ourselves uh, for hope. Or we also can't have a vain belief in the inherent goodness of mankind. The idea that, well, man, mankind is inherently good, and so that goodness is going to win out over the evil in this world. It's not just a vain, inherent belief in the goodness of mankind. Instead, we have to realize that real hope comes from God. And in order to have real hope, we have to look to God. And with that, I want to read for you once again... Romans chapter 15, verse 13. With all that in mind, hear this. It says, now, we'll talk in a minute how that now is built on what he just said before. It's kind of like a therefore. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In here, we see what true biblical hope is. When we say biblical, we're saying the hope that is presented in God's word. Of course, you then have a decision. We all have a decision. Wait, do I believe in God's word? Do I believe that it is God's word? Or do I just believe that it came from people? And then, I'm, you know, we said we can't just have our hope cannot be in a vain, inherent idea of the goodness of mankind. It can't just come from people. And that's one thing we have to realize, first of all is that true hope, number one, it comes from God. It comes from God. God is the source of the hope that we are talking about. It is all 
from him, based on him, derived from him. The very beginning of that verse says, Now may the God of hope. He is the God of hope. One of my other favorite definitions of God comes from the book of 1 John. It says, God is love. Not just that God loves, but he is the essence of love. You have the same kind of idea right here. Uh, he is the God of hope. He's not the God that hopes. He is the God of hope. And because he's the God of hope, if we want to find hope, we have to then look to God. We have to know God to know the kind of hope that we are talking about right here. We have to, as we look to hope, this is an assured hope all the time. This is an assured hope that I know, I, I look ahead and I know this, kind of, this is not the kind of hope, well then, you know, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Because when we look to God, we're looking to a solid foundation. We sang this song, you know, Solid Rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And always like, on the solid rock I stand. Because God is the basis. God is the source of the hope that we're talking about. It comes from him. Why? Because he is the God of hope. When we say the God of hope here, because lots, lots in our singing today also brought in, the, that, uh, especially King of Kings songs, brought in the idea of the triune God. And we see the Trinity when we look to this verse in terms of hope. Because when it says it comes from God... In terms of the triune God, we're talking about God the Father here. That God the Father, He is hope. But then, where does Christ come in the picture? It says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. We said, number one, that true biblical hope comes from God because God, He is the God of hope. Number two, says that hope is established by faith in Christ. Hope is something that comes from God, but it is established in us by faith in Christ. It is impossible to have the kind of hope we're talking about without faith in Jesus Christ. And you get that in this verse. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you then may in turn abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we'll get there. But you just follow the progression here. He's the God of hope. So I have to look to God. But then how am I going to then know God? How am I going to tap into the God of hope? How is he going to be my source of hope? It's going to come right there, it says in the middle of the verse, in believing. How is this going to happen? It's going to happen in believing. And one of the reasons that we, I backed up and I read from verse 7 is because right there that whole description is describing Jesus Christ, especially in reference to him coming for not only for Israel, but for the Gentiles, for him coming for uh, every facet of mankind. So when you look back, it says in verse 7, therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. So he's looking back to this relationship that we have with God through Jesus Christ. And in verse 8, now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers, that he is the awaited Messiah. He is what is spoke about in the Old Testament, that he is then going to fulfill the law, which the sign of the law is circumcision. Jesus Christ became the servant. He went to the cross. He did this that we may then tap into the God of hope, that we may know God. So when it says in believing, it's not in believing in yourself. It's not in believing in the inherent goodness of mankind. It's not in believing just randomly that things will work out. It is in believing in God through faith in Jesus Christ. And with that, it's not just believing there is a God. It's not enough to believe there is a God. We have other scripture where tongue-in-cheek says... Even the devil believes in God, and he fears him. 
It's not just to to believe in God. We have to believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior because hope is established by faith in Jesus Christ that gets us to the God of hope. I want to make a reference here. This is one of those times you can flip over real quick to chapter 5. We read in verse 1. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And this word peace will come in here in a moment as well, and we kind of get to the end of all this. We have peace with God. Y'all heard me pretty much every Christmas since I've been here. I try to make the point that when it says in, in, the, whole, in the Christmas account, and when the angels appear to the shepherds, and it says, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And that is misinterpreted as peace between people. You know, the idea of no war, that we would have peace on earth in this sense. That's not what it's being talked about. What it's talking about is what's said right here, peace with God. That we are at enmity with God because of our sin, but because of Jesus Christ, now we can be at peace with God. It's not goodwill towards men, goodwill towards each other it's being talked about. It's goodwill between man and God. No longer enmity and separation. We're justified by faith. What did we say in the, you know, in chapter 15? It's in believing. By faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into his grace in which we stand. And because of that, it's the end of verse 2, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. God is the source. In this sense, you have God the Father because he is the God of hope. So therefore, true biblical hope comes from God. But how do you access the source? You would think about it in this sense. If you have a well, and of course, water is representative of of life. Because you can go for quite a while. I know a lot of you don't believe this. You can go for quite a while without food. But you can't go very long at all without water. In fact, our bodies are mostly made of water, must constantly be replenished. But if you had beautiful, fresh water at the bottom of the well, how are you going to access it? Unless you have a really long straw, you're going to need to put what down there? Come on, you know this. A bucket. And it may seem somewhat a little bit crass to compare Jesus Christ to a bucket, but that is the illustration here. That God is the source of hope. We want to access that hope, but how do we access it? In a sense, then it is like then we are, through Jesus Christ, we are accessing that wellspring of life. It is in believing, but it's specifically in believing in Jesus Christ. It's not believing whatever we want to believe about God. And it's not believing any other religious system of the world that mankind has developed. There is one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven, Scripture says, by which we can be saved. So if we're talking about biblical hope, it is only established by faith in Christ. Because that's the only way to God, and He is the only source of real hope. He is the God of hope. We got the Father. We got the Son. And there's one more. You know who it is? It's the Holy Spirit. And as we go back then, and you can, we'll come, we'll come back to chapter 5. We go back to verse, chapter 15 and verse 13. We said, the God of hope, the Father, fill with you with all joy and peace in believing. And we know that's in believing in who? That's believing in Jesus Christ. That you may then, and I know for a lot of us, the reason that we're, In church today, the reason that we're listening to this sermon is because we have come to God by faith in Jesus Christ. And so we're like, okay, you know, I'm there. But then also, I still maybe feel like my hope is not what it could be or what it should be. So then you get a reference to, after believing, that you may then abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the question, of course, as we will get to our close here and the challenge we'll put forth is, first of all, do you have this hope? Have you come to God by faith in Jesus Christ? But then secondarily, are you, if you're a Christian, abounding in hope? 
abounding and abundance. It was ama- it's amazing to me how, you know, we still have a Christmas tree right here. And at first, we have a Christmas tree in our house. And, I, you know, I know that many of you have been blessed just like our family has been blessed. And you're able to get a lot of gifts. And so at first, there'll be a couple gifts under the tree. But then eventually, you look over there, and we're so blessed. It was like there's this abounding pile of gifts. Goes quick, though, doesn't it? You start opening it up, and it goes real quick. But it's, at one point, you're looking at it like, I can't believe how much is there. And that's really what, you know, the, in Christ Jesus, we're supposed to abound with hope. That I can't believe how much there is. I can't believe how much is there. We said that hope comes from God. Hope is established by faith in Christ. And hope is empowered by the Holy Spirit. How do we abound in hope? We are, it is empowered by the Holy Spirit. You notice this. That you may abound in hope. How? How do you do that? It's not just wishful thinking and optimism. It's not, ah, uh, well, I don't really care, so I'm just going to go through life numb. No, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we're saying then that as it is, comes from God, it's established by faith in Christ, it is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Abound in hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. And then I want, would love to reference you back to, once again, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And we talked about how this hope that we're talking about is not just wishful thinking. That's a lot of times how we use hope. It's just wishful thinking. You know, once again, I hope my team will win. That kind of thing. Don't know. Maybe you don't even think it will happen, but I hope it will happen. No, this is a different kind of hope. In verse five, verse 5 of chapter 5 says, Now this hope does not disappoint. This is a hope that will never disappoint you. Because, how? why? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom was given to us. Past tense, that if you've been saved, you've come to faith in Jesus Christ, you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, He came inside the indwelling Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been given to you. He's been poured out. The Holy Spirit has been poured out into your hearts. And He then, once again, He is the source of hope that does not disappoint. So we see, once again, two verses here that talk about this hope in reference to the Holy Spirit. What is it that the Holy Spirit does in us? that creates such abounding hope. Well, you have two words here. These are words we close with. And they are two words which are very Christmassy words. But for the Christian, they are not limited to Christmas time. Maybe accentuated to a certain degree, but not limited. And they are in the middle of verse 13. Joy and peace. Right? Joy and and peace. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is, what are we, what is it abounding in our life? It's two things named here are joy and peace. It's empowered by the Holy Spirit now that, that we have joy. James 1, 2 says, count it, and verse 3 says, count it, my brethren, count it all joy. When you face, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces things in life. The Christian can go through difficult times and difficult things, but still have joy because we know that through it and in it, even though it is difficult, God is producing something in us as our faith is exercised, as our faith is worked out. That even when we go through difficult times, we know that God has a purpose. God has a plan. God is doing something. God is working. We have hope in that because in this sense, our hope is in the God of hope. That we know by Jesus Christ and he is evidenced and overflowing in us by the Holy Spirit. This is the kind of hope that we are talking about. But also there is peace. The abounding by the Holy Spirit, this hope, it's manifested by a joy in our life, but also a peace. 
And one of my favorite verses in regards to peace is Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, where it says, The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That means it doesn't always make sense. It's an ability to be at peace even when it doesn't make sense. And by the way, the verse before said, when it says that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, it tells you that the way to access this says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, make your requests known to God. Go to the God of hope when you're looking for hope. And the peace of God, which sometimes doesn't even make sense. Where's that peace come from? It's from God, because God is my source of hope. Also, too, back at chapter 5, remember it said this, Therefore, having been justified by faith, having been saved by faith, we have peace, once again. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I know this. If you... If you, and you know this as well, if you're in Christ Jesus, and this becomes then something that as we exercise our faith and live in our faith, no matter what happens, nothing can separate me from the love of God. That's what the scripture tells us. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. And one day, either my Savior returns or I go to my Savior, no matter what happens. This is the kind of hope that we are talking about. And as we look ahead to a new year, we also realize that not only is it our role to abound in this hope, but it's also our role to carry this hope to the world. We come in this room right here. We come from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different opinions and ideas, likes and interests. What has brought us all in this same room today? It is a common belief in the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. And what we are told is that that's a hope we personally access, but then that's a hope that we want to share with the world. The call to joy and peace does not stop at Christmas time. It's something that we then carry into uh, the coming year because the world needs joy, peace. The world needs hope that does not disappoint. People in your life are constantly disappointed. They hope something good will happen. They're constantly disappointed. Share with them the hope that is in you. As we close, we sing, you know, the song, it's still the greatest story ever told. And this is a reminder that Jesus Christ is not just a Christmas message, and it's not just an Easter message, that Jesus Christ is the hope that people need every single day. And as we sing this, I encourage you to think about, do you have this hope? Have you yet come to faith in Jesus Christ? If you haven't, make today the day. Respond. Come forward today. But also, are you abounding in hope? Is there something that's getting in the way? We talked here a couple weeks ago about how sin can get in the way of the activity of the Holy Spirit and the filling of the Holy Spirit. Is there something in your life maybe you need prayer for? Um, maybe you come up today. Maybe you put it on your decision form. You, you hand that to me. You, uh, you do that electronically. But some way in which you respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Because not only are we supposed to have the hope, we're supposed to abound in it. But then furthermore, as we sing a song, you come on forward. We, we think about it this way. Am I sharing that hope? You know, the best way to understand your faith is to try to explain it to somebody else. The best way to grow in your faith and have it abound is to have it overflow into the life of someone else. And if they're lacking hope, let that hope flow over from you by telling them about the Jesus who brings the hope that does not disappoint to a world that has no hope and needs it so greatly. Let's stand, let's sing our closing hymn.